Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and I bet you're wondering why I'm wearing this get up today. It's because it is like a thousand fucking degrees here in Southern California. Woo! But the good news is, is I'm leaving Southern California. That's right. I'm moving away all the way to the uh, exotic land of Pennsylvania. <laughs> And that's the bad news. The bad news is moving and getting all this shit together is going to make it very difficult to produce good episodes of this show. But don't worry, I've got plenty of content for you coming up. If it hasn't already been launched, I'm going to start putting up episodes of the old Rated M podcast from way, way back in 2017. I've got 18 episodes of that lined up and ready to go. So you may hear one or even all of those getting uploaded soon right here to this channel. So stay tuned. Also, today I have a classic episode of the Dan Classic Show, the Supergirl Review, that was uh, that had a copyright claim, so I whacked it up and got some of the stuff out of there, and hopefully YouTube won't fuck me in the ass again on this one, and it'll be all sitting pretty, which will lead us to what will be the season finale of the Dan Classic Show coming up next week which will be the Supergirl review that I promised last week. So, hope you guys enjoy the show today. Stay tuned to this channel for updates. Uh, follow me on Facebook, The Dan Classic Show, Instagram, all that shit. So, until next time, enjoy the show. Raz Holly, hit the music! It's, it's almost like he's like a noodle. Look, on my desk, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's an action figure, it's Supergirl, it's a DC TV Supergirl uh, based on uh, Melissa Benoist. It's a really cool looking figure, I picked this up at my local comic book store, and now we're going to take a look at it. I haven't opened it up, I've been waiting and waiting to get this fucking thing open. On first glance, let's take a look at the packaging, I've got... You've got uh, the picture of the figure on the side. You've got a collect them all sort of line up on the back. You've got, you know, the Martian Manhunter, Supergirl, Vixen, and Constantine, all from uh, the DC TV shows on the CW and respective other networks that they may have aired on at some point. Um, interesting thing here, I don't know if you can really tell, the figure on the back of the package here looks a little different from the one in the box. Um, another weird thing about this box. What, did she need to fucking breathe? There's holes. There's like air holes punched in the box. <laughs> I don't understand that either. Um, maybe some sort of vacuum seal thing. You've got the Supergirl insignia, or not insignia, but the logo right there. You've got your warnings and so on and so forth. This is number one in whatever series they're doing here. Maybe this is number one of this series. You know, I would have hoped to get a couple more out of this. Maybe the Flash or something. Maybe there's already a Flash. I don't know. I'm, I'm speaking out of ignorance here. I don't fucking know. But in the package, you can see we've got um, Melissa Benoist as Supergirl with the insignia, with the sparkly looking outfit almost you've got three sets of hands um, you have open hands you have a grippy hand and then you, of course you have your fists she looks pretty poseable yeah, but let's take a look I'm getting her out of the box so inside the box you've got the figure in the plastic case you've got this cardboard doohickey that kind of holds the plastic piece uh, with a sort of a little silhouette background from the television show kind of thing going on. You could almost display the figure in that. Maybe if you wanted to. It is a little cheap. It's just taped together cardboard. But uh, who gives a shit? Anyway, also in the package, 
directions on how the hands are replaceable. I suppose you could mix and match hands between all the different figures if you wanted to. I should hope all this extra bullshit that, that doesn't matter doesn't add to the money that I paid for this fucking figure. Because this thing costs 30 bucks. 30 bucks for this thing. Yes, it does come with extra hands, and it is a nice sculpt at first glance. I haven't even looked at it yet. I'm gonna I'm about to break her out of the out of the plastic here, but I wanna say something first. $30 for an action figure is too much to pay for an average action figure. Now, your average figures right now are going anywhere between like, you know, $16.99 to, to $19.99, somewhere in that that range. And the, this is $10 more than that. So this should be you know, 30% more, 30% better than your average action figure, and while she does look a little bit better than your, you know, uh, Marvel Legends figures that you see out there, and the, those DC uh, Legends figures that you see out there, but not so much better, I don't know. Let's get this thing out of the plastic and see what One she can One thing real quick here, I hate it when they put these plastic twisty gimmicks around your figure in the package. It looks to me, when they do this, that it's a, it's a symptom of them not having enough money to design a package that'll hold the figure properly in transit. So you've got this thing on there, and then you have to, you know, manhandle the goddamn figure to get it out of there. So it's like she's all tied up, and not that I don't like the idea of seeing Supergirl all tied up, but I don't want to see this action figure get broken while I'm trying to release it from the goddamn package. I buy these things to open them up and look at them. I don't buy them to keep them in the box like some fucking sociopath. So, hey, toy companies or action figure companies, stop using these goddamn twist ties and these little rubber bands and horse shit. You're making people break their fucking figures when they pull them out of the package. You've got this little rubber band tying the legs around from the back so she can't get out from the front. It's like you'll see stuff similar to this on kink.com. But I'm not on kink.com. I'm opening a goddamn action figure. I don't need her ankles fucking binded to the packaging. I shouldn't need an extra like set of tools to get an action figure out of a box. I should just be able to lift it out gently. So, okay, so now I've got her out of the box. And I've got her in the what the fuck pose because I don't know. I've got her out of the box finally, and that's good. And let's take a look at the posability and, and how this figure looks. Out of the box, it's okay. It's not bad. I'm I'm not, you know, upset with it at any in any rate. It's pretty cool. The hair. Let's look at the hair. If you can see what the hair looks like. The coloring on it could have been better. You know, like, I look, it should be better. It should be better for what I paid. Fucking 30 goddamn dollars for this thing, it should look better than that. It's not bad, but it's not great. I'm not super fucking uh, impressed by it at all. The face sculpt is nice but not wonderful. She's got like a weird look on her face. I would have liked m more than one head with this figure. I've seen pictures of the other figures where she's got a smile and, and you know, I, I would have liked one with a smile or, or one with an angry face or one with a, you know, like a, ah, like an open mouth sort of gimmick. Um, but yeah, nothing there. And the paint application's a little wonky on the one eye. Um, it's hard to tell, but trust me, it's yeah. You can see the paint kind of, kind of like it's okay. It's all right. Like it's shiny where it's supposed to be shiny, and it's matte where it's supposed to be matte. Now, now check a look at this. I don't know if you can make it out, but on the arm here, she's actually got stitching on her costume. Now it's not 3D, it's something that's painted on there. That's a paint application that's actually pretty darn cool. Okay, so let's go to posability. <laughs> let's take a look and see what she can do. You've got the head. It goes eh, three quarters of the way back and forth. 
it doesn't really tilt. You might be able to pop it off. It'd be nice if you, if you had a different head to change it with. Um, take a look at the back. You've got the cape. It flops around. It's not fabric. It's rubber. Um, that's cool. That's cool. You know, like a lot of times those fabric capes don't really look right. So what I've got here on the front with the arms is all the way around. Yes, we go all the way around. We have an elbow joint, a swivel that goes all the way around. The wrist, of course, swivels all the way around because obviously you can change the hands out and and she can tilt it back and forth like bye 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 um okay so that's the arms now down to the legs she's got this skirt the skirts made out of rubber it's the same uh, material that the cape is made out of so it's not going to really let you maneuver her legs that much she can kind of she can go wide here she can move like this so as far as the top of the legs they don't turn the thighs don't turn in any direction um, it's just back and forth and out so you got kind of a sort of a not a swivel but a like almost a ball joint type of gimmick on these and then going to the knees this is really interesting you've got two joints on the knees you've got a top joint and that kind of takes you part of the way on a bend and then you've got another joint that takes it the final way so you get a complete complete bend of the knee which is pretty cool which is pretty cool I mean except for the fact that the rest of her leg doesn't really bend so are you gonna use it like she's hopping on one leg you know like I don't know what you would use it for but it's, it's still pretty cool to have and then of course you've got a nice a nice ankle that goes in pretty good direction so not too bad, not too bad. And taking a look at the figure, the paint application is okay, and there's some nice little details on it. And she's like, uh-uh, uh-uh, honey, talk to the hand. <laughs> and now we're going to take a look at some of the other accessories and the five-star review. My five-star system rates figures in five categories. Presentation, quality, Posability, playability slash collectability, and value. Let's start at the beginning with presentation. The packaging is clean and simple, but not boring. It puts the figure first instead of trying to draw your eye with flashy bullshit. You've got the logos and the insignias that you would expect, and inside you can see Karazor L comes with three sets of hands. Nothing blows you away here, but nothing wrong either. Eh, presentation gets three quarter stars. Up next is quality. This thing is schizophrenic in this aspect. On one hand, the paint job is great with the tiny stitching details on the suit, and it's shiny where it's supposed to be shiny, and matte where it needs to be matte. On the other hand, the sculpt is middle of the road, and nobody getting blown away here. And the face sculpt barely looks like who it's supposed to even look like. Well, it doesn't look ugly. I've seen figures that cost less that have a better resemblance to the person that they're supposed to be. And then there's the hair. I'm pretty sure I could have done just as good a job on the hair as on this figure. And I suck at customizing figures. After posing the figure a few minutes, I noticed paint began to chip and rub off onto the table. So even though it looks okay, I'm not sure how long that's going to last. The plastic, on the other hand, is good and durable, and I never felt like I was about to break this figure, even when I had to rip it out of the fucking plastic bubble thing. Quality on this figure is all over the place, and that's why quality gets half a star. Now for posability. At first, I thought this figure was pretty stiff and didn't have much to offer in this category. After a little time getting to know what it can do, I was pleasantly surprised to find that this figure can do more than just stand there. The lack of replaceable heads hurts here because even though you can get some cool poses, she's always got that thousand yard stare. Posability gets three quarter stars.
Collectability is next. This is a pretty good figure for fans of the TV show that want a little something to display to show their fandom. It looks good on a desk or in your entertainment center. It's not so expensive that taking it to the office to display is something to worry about either. For collectors though, there are much better Supergirl figures from a range of eras and versions of the character that make this look kind of cheap in comparison. But if you're a fan of the show, they've got you by the balls. Collectability gets three quarter stars. And finally, value. I paid 30 fucking dollars for this goddamn thing, and I feel like I paid a bit much. I've seen figures for other movies and TV shows that honestly look better than this figure and cost a bit less. It's got replaceable hands. Whoopee, let the party begin! This is not a $30 figure in my eyes, and that's why Value gets three quarter stars. So the DC TV Collectibles Supergirl gets a not-so-super three and one-half stars. Ouch! Bang for your buck was a real factor here. For the money I paid, I could have got one of those high quality SH Figure Arts Super Mario series figures. And that would have probably cost less and certainly come with more than just a couple of replacement hands. Come the fuck on, DC Entertainment. I expect more from the big boys. And when you explicitly sell this figure as a collectible, you're telling me that it should be of a certain quality. Well, fuckers, it's not. At the end of the day, it's not a bad figure, but it's not blowing anybody's minds either. And that's disappointing coming from a fan of the show and a fan of the character. I won't be picking up anything else from this series unless it ends up on a clearance rack somewhere. So until next time, keep your eyes on the skies and your hands off my sweet roll. Shut up, Duke. Dang.